Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're all well. I'm just going to start off like we usually do and do a very quick sound check. So if you can hear me, please type yes into the chat box, which is located on the right hand side of your screen. I hope everybody's doing well today. Let's have a look. Can everybody hear me? Are we live? Perfect. There we go. Thank you very much for confirming that. Always good to hear that our audience uh, can hear us. Uh, so just a quick introduction from me. My name is Chantelle Newton and I'm the Marketing Manager at the UK Contact Centre Forum and the editor of Contact Centre Monthly, our online e-magazine. I've just got a few housekeeping points to go through before we begin. We do have some polls for you to participate in today. When prompted, the polls will appear automatically on your screen. Voting will remain open for approximately 30 seconds and when the polls close, the results will then be shown on screen. After our presentation today, we will be holding a Q&A session. Please post any questions that you have for our guest speaker in your chat box provided. The webinar is expected to last approximately 45 minutes. If you're unable to stay the whole session, the webinar is being recorded and the link will be emailed to all participants within 24 hours of the webinar ending. Please feel free to share this with any colleagues who you may also find uh, the, the content interesting for. So let's get today's session started and I'm going to hand you over to the very lovely Kezia Downing, who is the AI product manager and researcher from TalkDesk. Thank you, Kezia. Thank you. So hi, my name is Kezia. I am a product marketing manager in the AI team here at TalkDesk. And I actually joined TalkDesk because I find it really fascinating how customer service and customer service technology shapes brands and shapes customers' perceptions of brands. So one aspect of this that continues to excite me and is becoming way more prevalent is artificial intelligence. And this is really revolutionizing CX. So over the next 30 minutes, I'm gonna be talking about how we see AI being used in contact centers you know, for a Netflix-like customer experience. And we'll have a Q&A at the end. But um, so firstly, we're gonna have a poll. And the question you're gonna be asked is, do you think it is critical to your business? Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Do you think it's critical to your business to update your customer service with new technology? So I'll give you a couple of seconds to answer that question. Okay, 100%. And I just want to make sure that you can see my slides again. Apparently not. <laughs> um, hang on a minute. There can we you go. See we my can slides? see them. We can, yes. yes. So, what I am going to do actually is I'm going to turn my camera off because it can be a bit laggy with my camera. And there's a few kind of GIFs and things throughout the slides. So, I'm just going to turn my camera off. but. I'm still here. So can you you can see my slides and everything? Yes, you're all fine, Kezia. OK, amazing. Would be good if I can go to the next slide. OK, yes. So let's just reflect on the last year. You know, it was a memorable year that created memorable digital experiences for many of us around the world. And, you know, personally, I had to transform my life in all of these areas. So I onboarded into my new job from home. I completed the final year of my degree and I actually graduated all completely virtually. And I was ordering almost everything online and, you know, socialising with friends all became entirely digital. And I was regularly using FaceTime and Zoom and I actually ended up subscribing to new channels like Amazon Prime, Disney Plus and Netflix became my new best friend. But pretty much every possible activity. So, you know, schooling, groceries, entertainment and education now has an online equivalent. And actually what I found really surprising was watching people who were once so uncomfortable with new technology. Um, when I say that, I'm actually referring to my elderly family members, but you know, they came, they became completely at ease with it. And we haven't really seen that before. So, you know, there's a growing adoption to digital interactions, and this is clearly a global trend. And you can actually see here, there's some stats from this McKinsey survey, and you can see the rapid adoption acceleration to digital customer interactions since the pandemic hit. And it really was these digital first brands that were able to deliver a gold standard of customer experience. So 
This kind of strategy involves prioritizing the digital touch points so customers can find everything they need virtually, allowing for a really simple, efficient and connected customer experience. And, you know, it's actually the well-known brands who've put in the hard work in, in terms of, you know, trialing this new technology. And they've really paved the way for other brands to be a part of that digitization of the customer service. And we should be grateful because we can use this to our advantage. But, you know, they inevitably raise the bar for what we consider really good customer experience or CX. So more consumers got a taste of what, good, of what a good digital customer experience feels like. And they really want all brands to offer the same. So, you know, it was Netflix, Peloton and Farfetch who all played a really key role in setting the bar for great customer experience. And, you know, this digital first strategy has really paid off for them. So, you know, you can see a few stats here. There's a 61% usage increase at Netflix. I'm absolutely sure I accounted for a small part of this percentage. And, you know, that's in part because it offers a really personalized experience. It knows what I want. It's quick, it's simple, and it's really impressive. But, you know, also Peloton tripled their membership base in the past year, and Farfetch actually had an increase of 60% website traffic. But being digital first opens up the customer base. There's no physical restrictions, and brands can serve more customers globally. So brands have to be prepared to take on all these new customers. But, you know, however, customers can't always have a human agent for every single customer query because that would be really difficult and really expensive. So machine intelligence and AI supported automation becomes the only way to get a cost effective scalable solution. And you know, this really enables customer interactions across a range of contact channels whilst maintaining a personal touch that makes a brand stand out. So it's a fast and easy fix, but it's also really impressive. And top brands like Netflix understand that creating customer journeys that impress customers requires eliminating unnecessary human interaction and adopting AI enables brands to do this. So I really want to say that AI is not something to be scared of. It's a huge part of our lives already without us being consciously aware of it. And, you know, today, today we've been enjoying without really noticing weak forms of AI. So this plays a part in Amazon recommending the right gift or Netflix suggesting the perfect film for your Sunday afternoon or even how Facebook fills your newsfeed. AI has really been that little helper that makes our days a little bit easier and a little bit more fun. So when I describe a Netflix like CX, I'm really referring to that fast frictionless service that's intuitive and can find you know, what I'm looking for straight away. And these preferences are now growing into expectations. It's becoming a necessity to reach that gold standard of CX that directly impacts a brand's bottom line. And with AI and automation, we really can achieve this. But how would business leaders feel the benefit of a good customer experience? So a branded customer experience is where the brand's promise, values, essence, you know, everything that it stands for really comes alive through its customer experience. And a good brand is able to set that expectation. Customers are satisfied when that expectation can become a reality. So we judge a brand on this through its customer touch points and today's technology, <clears throat> sorry, today's technology, online services and social media has really driven customer expectations sky high. So actually I was reading a Salesforce report on this and it said 58% of customers said this year's crises have raised their customer service standards. So it's, it's getting harder for brands to keep up with this. And there is a perception among businesses that although better customer service would bring value, the end service would always be a cost center. But modern CX is measurable, and we have actually seen that it directly correlates with brand value. So you can see in these statistics here that enterprises with high brand value will outperform the stock market by about 134%, so that's huge. And actually in 2020, 65% of customers switched brands due to a poor customer service. So what I'm really trying to say here is we have to be careful because the cost of switching brands is getting lower and lower. We have more options for almost all of the services we consume. And so we're seeing great branded CX is measurable. It produces brand benefits like customer loyalty that directly impacts the bottom line and actually can transform the contact center. So from 
you know, and that can go from a, a cost center to a profit center. And you know, obviously that's that's really important. So, so we know that technology underpins customer service. It you know essentially always has, but many are unaware that the artificial intelligence is how leading brands are being able to raise the bar for this gold standard of customer experience. And actually at TalkDesk, we've used this jobs to be done methodology. This is an actual methodology. And we've used it to pinpoint the jobs contact centers are trying to get done. So a job, a job in this context, or even a job outside of this context, a job is a goal or an objective or a problem that must be solved in order to create the desired outcome. So I actually put in here this famous quote from Theodore Levitt, he's a, a Harvard professor. And the quote is, people don't want a quarter inch drill, they want a quarter inch hole. So let's say the desired outcome is to hang a picture. The job to be done is getting a hole in the wall and the solution is the drill and that's what gets the job done. So in our case, this is AI. And what we've done is we've identified the three jobs that need to be solved in the contact center to make contact centers operate faster and more efficiently. And what I actually find interesting about these is many of these haven't changed. And, you know, those with the biggest and most immediate impact are increasing the self-service rate, identifying causes of customer issues. And, you know, these would be the reasons as to why customers are having issues that generate a call to support. So tackling this proactively mitigates downstream issues. And number three is the help for agents to resolve issues correctly and quickly. So the solution or the drill in this case would be AI, which helps contact centers work faster and more efficiently. So I actually wanted to look into this. So firstly, increasing the customer self-service is where you're really going to get the biggest cost containment impact because 20 to 30 percent of cases really don't need human help. And we know that more and more people prefer to do it themselves. And one group that I actually briefly want to draw your attention to is Gen Z's. Now, they are the do-it-yourself generation. They already have a huge spending power, despite many having not entered the workforce yet. And they are the world's first digital natives. So they generally prefer super fast, efficient, 24-7 service. And so with that, you know, they, they would prefer to avoid those unnecessary human interactions and use self-service options like chatbots or self-help pages. And this is becoming way more important. And I would like to add, I'm a Gen Z and I can completely vouch for this. I will do anything to avoid unnecessary human to human interaction, because in my mind, I'm like, oh, I'll just waste time. I'd rather just do it myself and get it done quicker. So we can apply AI in self-service knowledge portals, and this can help customers really help themselves. So we can have AI powered automations that retrieve knowledge from multiple sources to get the right answer to the customer, which, you know, it, it might be to get answers to FAQs or you know, re reset passwords or other common tasks. But we can also apply AI for automated resolution for the voice channel with voice enabled virtual assistants. And lastly, we can provide automated resolution for those increasingly digital engagements with digital virtual assistants or chatbots. And for me, I would always go for the chatbot if that's any help. <laughs> So the second, the second job to be done here is identify the causes of customer issues. So first we can apply AI to automate the collection, the transcription and the analysis of every single customer interaction. And this can be for both voice and text interactions. But we can also automate real time alerts for urgent issues, as well as build custom automations to manage agent demand and proactively notify customers about issues. But we can also automate the collection and analysis of customer feedback to respond faster, you know, retain customers and avoid churn. And we use AI to train our analytics models to discover meaningful patterns. So now we can automatically discover those hidden patterns in the specific language used by agents and customers. So our third job to be done is increasing the ability for agents to actually resolve issues quickly and correctly. And brands can build custom AI powered automations for agent assisted service. So every company will have different automation needs depending on what the company does. So this customization is gonna be really important. But we can also build out a, a robust and deep agent knowledge base that provides agents with 
the best recommendations to resolve cases quickly and more accurately. And this knowledge would usually be different content that would usually be externally facing to the customer. So only, you know, content that only the agent can retrieve. And this can also deliver to the agent the next best action in real time, transcribing the conversation and suggesting content and automated actions for each stage of the conversation. And finally, agents can now use a no-code training tool that leverages agents' expertise to fine-tune AI models to maintain accurate AI assistance. And this provides the best answers to agents over time. So I just wanted to go back to the drill analogy because, you know, using a traditional drill, it requires traditional tools, a tape measure, a leveler, and so on. And drilling that hole in the wall, you're not always going to get it right on the first try. But with AI and automation, it's like having laser measuring, digital leveling, you know, you can detect pipes or wires behind the wall and you can get it done faster, accurately and on the first time round. So that's exactly how we see AI. It's the drill that solves these three main jobs within the contact centre. And actually, thanks to computing power and data storage advancement, which we've really got through cloud computing, artificial intelligence can really process large amounts of data to learn solutions to problems and help both agents and customers find accurate answers a lot faster. And this is made possible with AI powered assistance, alerts, you know, discovery, prediction and so on. And one thing I find really interesting actually is Gartner predicts that 40% of interactions will be fully automated using AI and self-service in 2023 and that will be up from around 25%. However, there is a problem to solve and that is actually the accuracy of AI models. So in a live environment, the accuracy of AI can sharply decline by as much as 20% if there is no way to intervene and its output is already incorrect. But there are far reaching benefits of AI and this means that accuracy challenges are certainly worth solving, but there are bar barriers that do exist there. So you know, firstly, training of AI models normally falls into the hands of data scientists. You know, you often have to go to specialists to train AI models, but they are scarce resources and companies can incur high IT and professional services costs. And, you know, to be honest, really no business can afford these costs and nor can they put up with the long turnaround times to fix the AI accuracy issues, you know, whenever they occur. And in these cases, you know, once you once you start using AI, you, they they might appear more frequently, or you might realise that the questions that your, you know, your virtual agents are responding to aren't correct. So you do need to find out what the kinks are and fix them. So these AI tra training issues is, you know, it, it is a significant barrier to AI adoption in the contact centre. And there really needs to be a solution for this. And that solution must be cost effective and straightforward enough to you know, make AI training part of the standard or everyday contact center operations. Um, so brands need a solution that, oh, sorry, reduces the dependency on professional services like data scientists to train AI whenever there's an issue that needs to be fixed and also maintains high accuracy levels and is able to operationalize AI training into the everyday workflow. So at TalkDesk, we have actually introduced a tool called AI Trainer, and this uses human in the loop technology to solve these problems by enabling non-technical staff like agents or you know, your supervisors to improve the AI training models with no coding, but actually just clicks. So it's a, it's a really easy interface. And this consequently reduces the dependency to hire professional services, such as data scientists. And also contact centers can maintain and customize the accuracy of AI models. And very importantly, having AI bots across the contact center system can resolve more cases through automation, particularly for those repetitive tasks. So this process to improve the accuracy of AI models is made easier and cost effective by operationalizing non-technical staff to do the work with you know, a no-code interface. And in my opinion, this makes AI adoption completely worthwhile. So AI can become part of your everyday, you know, part of the furniture, something that you can edit, you can adapt it, 
but you can also rely on it. So I think it's important to mention that the purpose of AI is not about replacing humans with machines, but it's actually about changing the tasks usually carried out by humans who can focus on more purposeful work and you know, optimize workplace productivity. So the cost per case decreases and customer satisfaction can improve. And I wanted to show you a conceptual model of how this works. Now, I do appreciate there's a lot going on in this model, but you know, what it comes down to is whenever the virtual agent is unable to answer a query, this will be flagged up to the agents and supervisors who can check the problem and fix it. So, you know, just for an example, let's say it was January last year and a customer, uh, uh, sorry, a customer messaged a virtual agent and asked if COVID would affect the shipping of their order. So the virtual agent was not trained to interpret the word COVID and it's not confident with how to answer this question. So this has been flagged up to a supervisor who can review the question and train the AI with how to accurately respond to this question and also to recognize the word COVID. So, you know, the next time somebody asks that question, the virtual agent can recognize the question and provide the accurate response that the customer at the beginning was looking for. So with human in the loop technology, a contact center can quickly diffuse situations before hundreds more customers call up and face the same issue. And I mean, we can imagine this happened quite a lot last year. So you can successfully resolve more cases through automation and improve accuracy, increasing customer satisfaction and really decreasing the cost per case. So in the end, what's happening here is the reimagination of the customer journey and also the role of the agent with AI. So contact centers can take more proactive actions and moving away from complicated IVRs and long wait times that cause customer frustration and you know, affect customer retention as well as brand value. And with AI, customers can self-serve. They, you know, they could contact virtual agents who can respond to their questions. And should a customer require human assistance, that agent can be supported by AI-powered automations so agents can find answers a lot quicker and a lot easier. And this really offers that impressive but surprisingly simple customer service. And actually, an example of a customer journey that could be made faster and easier with AI could be, you know, let's say a customer was concerned about a returns policy. So they might find the answers they need online or by chatting to a virtual agent. But if their problem was more complex and they actually needed to speak to a human agent, let's say they called, they, you know, they enter a call with a human agent, when they mention the returns policy in a call, AI-powered agent assistants can listen and automatically display the returns policy to the agent, you know, the actual text of the returns policy. And, and it can show the agent the returns history and you know, all purchasing history and the customer details automatically just by listening to that call. So this really mitigates agent errors and improves first contact resolution and it really helps all agents be their best. So this is the new bar for great customer service. It's implementing the right AI tools which can help harness data to make fast decisions or quickly deduce conclusions. So the gold standard of customer service is therefore this kind of AI enhanced or human oriented contact center. So again, it's important to emphasize we're not trying to get rid of the, the human agent. And I think we can all appreciate empathy and human judgment is still totally irreplaceable and extremely important to customers. And I think I think that's, you know, that's that would appear in banking and, you know, matters where it involves lots of money. Customers want to talk to a real person. So it's important to see how you can maintain the human touch and meet the needs and expectations of the customer. And the answer that makes these things possible is AI enhancements. So I just wanted to kind of wrap up here. AI is the solution to the jobs of the contact center. So a contact center that is intelligent, that is fast and efficient, will boost customer satisfaction and brand value and work as a competitive advantage. And AI is really becoming, it's no longer a nice to have, it's becoming way more of a necessity in providing that gold standard Netflix-like CX. And particularly with the increase of Gen Z joining our workforce and their growing spending power, which is already huge, 
we need to anticipate the increasing demand for 24-7, frictionless and impressive branded CX. And it's AI that is going to unlock those branded experiences that do impress customers. So this transformation is important for optimizing a cost center into something that can directly link to return on investment and profit and brand value. So, so AI really in this instance is something that complements both the customer and the agent experience. And customers can be provided with the tools to self-serve, you know, for that quick, simple, do-it-yourself service. But also, you know, should the issue be more complex, customers can converse with AI-assisted agents who can find exactly what they're looking for. And with AI infused across key elements of the contact center, businesses can identify issues faster. Agents can ensure issues are resolved way more quickly and customers can be delighted, you know, with that fast and frictionless customer service. So I just wanted to switch gears a little bit here and tell you a bit more about TalkDesk CX Cloud. So our contact center solution CX Cloud provides a better way for businesses and customers to engage with one another. So it includes solutions for customer engagement, workforce engagement, AI and knowledge, which I have discussed, analytics and insights, and this is all within a single unified platform. And our speed of innovation and global footprint really reflect our commitment to ensure businesses everywhere can deliver better customer experiences through any channel, resulting in those higher customer satisfactions and cost savings and profitability. And all of that innovation has actually led Gartner to place TalkDesk in their leader quadrant for the 2020 Contact Centre as a service magic quadrant. And more recently, TalkDesk have been named a leader in the Aragon Research Globe for Intelligent Contact Centres in 2021. So I've actually got to the Q&A part, but I did want to ask you a final question. And that question is, will AI be a part of your roadmap in updating your customer service? Okay, oh, that's interesting. 92% said yes. That's really interesting. So yeah, thank you so much for listening to me talking about AI and the Netflix-like customer experience. And I'm more than happy to open up the Q&A and answer any questions that anybody has. Thank you so much, Kezia. Like Kezia just said, if you've got any questions at all, please post them in the chat box provided. Um, and I'll post those to Kezia. Let's just go through and see if we do have any questions to get us started. <clears throat> here we go. Okay, so a, a first question here, Kezia. Uh, now that we know about human in the loop technology, how does this change the type of interactions that can be automated? Okay, yeah. So Human in the loop technology, I mean, it firstly changes the rate to as which, you know, automations can occur. You can, you know, you can pump them out fairly quickly. And um, automations are no longer limited to a small number of things. So this really means that answers to more urgent matters can be automated. So contact center operation staff can have a more fluid control of the automations and update the answers that can then be retrievable from virtual agents. So, but you know, also training AI can now involve agents and supervisors who have customer service expertise, and that can be specific to the company. So agents have the power and the flexibility to train AI with the questions and answers that they know are being commonly asked. And actually brands who use this tech can move away from more of a robotic customer journey and create and edit automations for more natural uh, more natural responses for a more sophisticated automation. Perfect. I Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, have you done any work with councils? 
Um, not that I'm aware. We might have. We might have. I'd have to get back to you on that. I'm more than happy for you to reach out to me personally and I can actually find out for you. We might have. I'm sorry I don't know off the top of my head. But yeah, I'm more than happy for you to reach out to me and I can find out for you. Perfect. I will be posting um, Kezia's email address in our chat box um, for you to copy, but it will also be included in the follow up email. So if the person that asks, asks that question would like to reach out personally to or directly, sorry, to Kezia, um, she could have a more in-depth conversation with you about that. Uh, we've got a question here. So how would you advise a customer to go about recognising whether the investment in AI slash ML would benefit them? Sorry, can you repeat that question? Absolutely. Uh, how would you advise a customer to go about uh, recognising whether the investment in AI would benefit them? Oh, OK. Yeah. yeah. So I would say, I mean, it depends on what industry you're in. I'd say AI works really well for companies or any industries where they have a really big customer base because and especially if it's a growing customer base as well, because, again, you can't have a human agent for every customer query. So I would say definitely look at the size of your customer base. Uh, it also depends on the kind of questions that people are asking. So if it's an industry where people ask very repetitive questions or, you know, that kind of thing, it, AI could be really beneficial in reducing the amount of repetitive tasks that human agents actually have to do. And actually it's things like, you know, if it was a utilities company, say it's like an electricity company, um, let's say they have an electricity outage and they need to be telling all of their customers, you know, we've got this electricity out outage. They can add automations into maybe virtual agent channels or even through voice channels that when people ask questions and say, you know, when is the electricity going to come back on, they can automate, they can, sorry, they can automate those responses. So, you know, it does depend on your industry, your customer base, how you think it would be useful. But if you if you do see that you have repetitive customer queries that are coming in, I think it's, you know, it's definitely very worthwhile and that's really where you would see a return on the investment because you do decrease the cost per case. I hope that answers your question. That's great, thank you. Um, so there's another question that's come in. Uh, the uh, asker is just wondering how effective can the agents be in training the AI models compared to data scientists and in relation to this how the ethical side of AI is handled in your solution? Yeah, okay, that's really, really interesting. So you might have to repeat that question halfway through in case I kind of forget the no second worries. answer. But, um, so agents, when they are training AI, everything that they put into the AI, so all of the, you know, all the suggestions that they make will then have to be reviewed by a supervisor. So you have that quality assurance check. So they can't just train the AI, you know, off the bat. It does get reviewed. They have to see what's going in. They have to make sure it makes sense. So, um, and as well, because it is, it's no code. It's a, it's a really easy user interface. It's easy to structure those conversation designs and to see if, you know, what, to see what you're adding, see if it makes sense in the conversational flow. And yeah, all of that. But with the, so, sorry, what was the first half of that question? Uh, so the first half was uh, how effective can the agents be in training the AI models compared to the data scientists? Oh yeah, yeah. So obviously the data scientists will actually be doing all of this with code, but the agents are doing this with clicks rather than code because with the human in the loop and actually with the product we have AI trainer, you're able to do that without code and then that gets implemented into the actual systems. And with regards to how ethical it can be. I mean, the. I mean, it depends kind of what industry you're in, but it's, you know, you're only gonna be putting in questions and answers for generally at the moment, very repetitive questions. And so it's, it's not kind of gonna take over the full contact center, you know, human agents still have a massive job to do. And as well, people have questions, you know, things about bias and you know issues like that in AI but really whatever you're putting into the system that's what's going to be coming out so ethical issues or bias or anything like that you just it needs to make sure that the supervisor is making sure everything going into the AI all of the questions they're being trained in and the answers you know are fine they're ethical they're answering customers questions that are valid customer questions and then you know as long as they're not they're not putting any information in or any 
answers that would have any bias to them or anything like that, then generally you'd be safe. I hope I've answered your question. That's perfect. Thank you. Um, just before we go into the next one, I have posted Kezia's email address in the chat, back, chat box for you. Um, so go ahead and take a note of that. Um, so our next question, are you noticing a take up in, older pop, in the older population and their engagement with automa automation and chatbots? Sorry, I didn't read that very well. I'll try that one again. So are you noticing a take up in the older population and their engagement with automation and chatbots? Yeah, so we don't actually measure the kind of generational use, so I wouldn't be able to answer that, you know, on data. Um, so, you know, my my short answer is I'm not sure. But I, what I can say is it's becoming way more popular and people are becoming way more comfortable with it. So I think, you know, customers interacting with all sorts of brands, you know, like Netflix, but, you know, like like anyone, there are so many more companies who are using automations or who are using AI customer service. So again, chatbots, I love a chatbot. I notice my bank uses chatbots. I can get my answers really quickly. And I actually notice my parents, my grandparents, they've got really comfortable with using those kind of AI powered automations. And, you know, that's just kind of part of their everyday now as well so yeah perfect thank you uh just a last call on any questions for kezia we've just got a couple more um so what govern what governance functionality exists to support advisor-led automation sorry what was that what governance what governance sorry. functionality exists to support advisor-led automation um i think i I think I understand this question. Um, well, we have when I when when I look at the kind of the governance with our automations and things like that, that what the products that we have and the AI that you know we are seeing more in contact centers, the the actual governance side of that is more internal. It's the actual companies, it's the supervisors, it's the head of the contact center operations who are able to, you know, look over what's going on, what AI is being involved, how things are being automated, how customers are interacting with those automations, you know, whether it's successful. And so, you know, I hope I'm answering your question. Um, but, you know, it, from the kind of governance side of things, this is all happening within contact centers. So, you know, currently it's all internal. That's great. Thank you. Um, so this one's uh, another question we've had submitted is a bit bit of a long one, so bear with me. Uh, so, okay. from the time you decide to run a project, what are the timescales a business should consider for deploying a pilot? And then, how long would you run a pilot to gather meaningful data to prove further investment? Okay, well, I I would probably need more information myself on this, but from my understanding, you. I mean, with AI, AI is it's artificial intelligence. It's constantly learning. So the way it learns best really is in a live environment rather than pilot. So it's if you, you know, if you are starting to use virtual agents and things like that, maybe they're not or they're not going to be able to answer every single question. And that's when that's when that question would go up and, you know, be flagged up to a supervisor to say, um, you know the virtual agent is saying it's it's not confident with how to answer this question and therefore you know this needs to be added to you know this question and an answer for this question needs to be added to the AI and to the virtual agent so the next time a customer asks that question it knows what to say so really it's kind of you you can do a lot of that in a live environment because even if a virtual agent isn't able to answer that question you uh, an, you know a customer would be able to then get in touch with a human agent and maybe they are assisted by AI as well. Maybe they are getting, you know, as I said, with the returns policy, you know, if a customer has a question on, on that, it would appear for them. And there's AI powered assistance in that sense as well. But, you know, it really is that AI needs to learn with all this new data, with all those customer interactions. So then it knows how to interact with customers in the future and answer all of those questions accurately. So you really do you know, sort out those kinks within the first couple of weeks that customers are using it, and then you get the long-term, really good quality CX. 
That's perfect. Thank you. So that's all for our audience questions. Um, Kez, you just, do you just want to give people some information about the ebook? Oh yeah, yeah. So we actually have an ebook on our website, and this is actually on the. Um, if I can remember the title, it's it's basically five steps that you can implement in your contact centre for a Netflix-like customer experience. So that's on our website. Um, Chantelle, I think, is going to be sending out the link that you can yeah, access if you want to learn more on this. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Um, yeah, I've just posted it in the chat box, but it will also be included in your follow-up email. Um, so it just ties in with the presentation that Kezi has given today, uh, free to download. Just follow the link that I've posted or the one that you get in your email and you'll be able to access that um, at your leisure. Uh, just double checking, we don't have any other questions just a couple of thank yous to you Kezia from our audience in the in the chat box there um so if you're happy I'm going to close off that's just fine with me and thank you for listening to me <laughs> and thank you for all of your questions you know I, I hope I've been able to answer them but I do genuinely mean that you know if you if I haven't been able to answer your question or you do want to know more please do get in touch you can find me on LinkedIn and you'll be able to find that information as well from Chantelle but yeah thank you so much Thank you so much. Uh, so that concludes today's session. I would just like to thank everybody for taking the time to attend today and a very special thank you to our guest speaker, Kezia. Uh, if you do have any further questions like we've said throughout um, and you want to speak to Kezia, her email address is in the chat box. Please feel free to reach out directly to her. Um, and then also the link for the ebook is in the chat box and uh, the link for the full in, sorry, the link for the playback will uh, be sent to you in a follow up email within the next 24 hours. Um, again, feel free to share this with any of your colleagues. Uh, for more information on membership of UKCCF and for a full list of our upcoming webinars, please visit our website, which is www.uk-ccf.co.uk. I look forward to welcoming you all again soon. Thank you very much. Continue to stay safe and have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kezia. Thank you.